Hey guys, what is up? It is Bibzuda7 here again, and welcome to another RuneScape 3 video here today. In this video, I'm going to be doing a guide for the new quest, Desperate Measures. This quest just came out today, and I'm going to be doing a full walkthrough for it, so let's go ahead and get started. First of all, for the requirements, you will need to have completed the Desperate Times quest prior to this one, as well as complete the base camp tutorial on Anachronia. I'll leave a link in the description to the wiki's uh, quick guide on Desperate Times. Uh, it's a pretty easy quest and then you'll also need level 50 agility and 50 archaeology they have a couple of recommended uh, quest requirements including Sliske's endgame which you can complete if you want to fully understand the lore and the story behind this but um, those have some quite high requirements so definitely not needed um, but however one thing you do need to know if you have completed fate of the gods you will need to get the measure back from Freniske if you don't have it in your bank. So that's what I'm doing here to show quickly. You can quick dial your world gate to Freniske and then enter and go to the Elder Halls. And that's where you can retrieve your uh, measure. And basically you only have to do this if you have completed Fate of the Gods. So you can come here, take the measure, and you'll have it for the quest. The only other thing you will need in terms of actual items required is 100 orthon glass. You don't need it with you, just have it stored in your archaeology material storage. You just need 100 of that for this quest. And you'll also need enough uh, combat gear and supplies to defeat one not so difficult monster. Um, they have a level 75 combat recommendation for this quest, and that seems about right. I mean, you won't really need much of any food if you have soul split and like max gear and stuff, but um, you know, you'll see the difficulty of it when we do get to that section. It is towards the end of the quest, however. So yeah, once you have the Orthon glass and the measure ready, uh, if you have, again, completed Desperate Times, or uh, rather, Fate of the Gods, you're gonna wanna head to, whoops, not the Barbarian Outpost, you're gonna wanna head to Burthorpe, where you did the, um, the Desperate, I'm getting confused now by the two quest names, the Desperate Times quest uh, here in the Burthorpe Castle, and just head upstairs and speak to Saren there to start the quest. So we're gonna head on up there. Um, I just completed this quest on my main recently, a couple of minutes ago, and I figured I would jump straight into the quest guide here. So it's pretty fresh in my mind on what needs to be done. Just speak through these chat options, and uh, I'm not really gonna comment too much on the story. Uh, you can pick either option there, it doesn't matter. And um, yeah, I'm not gonna comment too much on the story, but I definitely will mention what parts of the quest I liked and did it in terms of gameplay. Um, again, as far as I know, that option does not matter either. Uh, so once you have completed that chat, you want to head to Anachronia. Again, you have to have completed the, uh, the Anachronia base camp tutorial to have started the quest. So you should hopefully have the lodestone unlocked. If you don't, you can take the ship from the Varrock dig site. Uh, but once you're here, you want to come up to the uh, eastern side of the base camp here where you manage your resources and stuff and talk to Mr. Mordot, Mordo, I don't know how you say it, but um, yeah, just talk to him here and you will be able to ask about desperate measures right there. And you will ask where Keros and Thok are, and they are up here to the north. So once you've spoken to Mr. Mordo, I guess that's what I'll call him, you want to head out the north exit of the base camp towards where the Igneous Jadinkos are located, and that is where Thok and Keros will be. So we're going to head through there and speak to them, and you'll start kind of like a little memory type thing. There are several of these memories within the uh, the quest that you go through. This one a little bit different in that you actually end up controlling Thok in a kind of in a similar manner to a Fremenic Saga, although it is very short. Uh, so yeah, speak to Karos and Thok here and they'll, you know, ramble on about whatever. Um, I really, uh, I mean, I know I don't know anything about the lore, so I'm not really trying to say I, I don't, I wouldn't know if I read the lore, but it just seems weird that they have Thok involved in all this. Um, but yeah, you're in this memory here, and Keros is, is, you know, this is like from Thok's perspective. So once you have control, you want to walk a little bit in this direction to the east, and then Thok will do some push-ups um, for whatever reason. And I, I guess he gets a health bar up here too. So I think he's just like uh, embellishing the story a bit 
and Karos is like reeling him down, reeling him back. But um, there'll be some venomous dinosaurs that show up here. You just want to walk up and click on them, and you'll just insta kill them all with one hit. Uh, you know, of course, as you do, Thok wasting a bunch of Death Touch darts there. But uh, you want to continue heading to the east after they are dead, and you will. Oh, whoops. You want to make sure you don't skip the chat. You will try to leave the um, the memory. But if you do, you can just hit no, and then the chat will start over again. And then get through the chat, and you will eventually be able to continue through with a couple of more dinos in this area that you can just one hit. So do that as well. And then the continue heading through the, the passageway, and you will skip over to... Uh, you will end up skipping over to the bridge uh, towards the base camp after that little bit of dialogue. And Lenny Akia, the Magnificent, will be here. Thok with his usual strange, uh, creepy ma mannerisms with, with when there's uh, women around. Let's see. I want to stay. So, yeah, if you, you'll, you'll get that option a lot if you, like, try and walk with, before the dialogue's over. Just go ahead and always say no that you don't want to leave. Otherwise, I think you'll have to restart. But, uh, yeah, continue talking through. And once Lenny Akia leaves you can continue across the bridge. And once you're in the base, Doc will talk once again, and that will be the end of that little memory segment after Care Pack shows up and talks to him for a little bit. You don't have to do uh, anything further after this. Going through the chat with Care Pack and Talk has a couple other random things to say, and we are done with that memory. Oh, look, I was still Thok there for a second, but uh, yeah, that's that. And then talk to Karos a little bit further, and you can pick anything there again. A lot of meaningless chat options in this quest, as far as I remember. And then you'll see right here to the south, this uh, uh, excavation hotspot will appear. So you want to head there and excavate from the spot and or uncover the spot and then you want to excavate it level 50 archaeology required and um, it doesn't take too long to excavate or is it giving me a really low level Maddock yeah it is I don't know why I had an elder rune Maddock on my tool belt I'm gonna quickly go grab a Maddock out from the bank I'll make sure to addendum that at the beginning of the video to bring a good Maddock if you don't have it on your tool belt Okay, so once you have your good Maddock, if you forgot to bring it like I did, you can just go ahead and excavate from here. And like I said, it won't take too long, but it will take a little bit of time. And the only thing you'll get from here is Orthon Glass if you didn't have enough. But, I mean, you almost cer you certainly will not get enough uh, for what you do need. For each of these artifacts, you will need 50 Orthon Glass, and I'm just going to drop it if I get my full inventory. But you're just going to excavate here, and you will get an artifact. And then you need to go restore it with 50 Orthon and glass and you can either use your archaeology journal to teleport to the dig site or you can use a dig site pendant I will use the dig site pendant because it does take you a little bit closer to the actual workbench that you need as you can see so we're gonna restore the dragonkin device using 50 of our orthon glass right now and you will have the dragonkin device restored kind of looks like a, uh, a multi-sided die for uh, for like Dungeons and Dragons or something uh, but once you have that fully restored you want to return to Karos who is in that same location of course to the north by the Igneous Jadinkos as we are heading up there there is just gonna be basically you want to talk to him and then there will be another excavation point that will appear on the north side of the same area. Kind of weird how they just pop in and pop out of existence. Like you can see the excavation spot I just used is now gone. Um, but you know, I guess that's just the way things work. So you speak with him and you show him the device and then the other excavation point will show up. So I'm gonna excavate this and then basically you excavate this, go to the ba go to the dig site, restore it with another 50 orthon glass and then come back again. So I will go ahead and cut until we are back with the restored Dragonkin tablet. Okay, so we are returning to the same location here now with a restored Dragonkin tablet alongside of us. So we wanna to speak to Karos again from here 
and he will tell you to go speak to Hannibus, who is actually on the ranch out of time. So you can get there through a couple different ways. The first way is by going down here to this area, which is a little south and west of the base camp, and taking the tree from there. Or, uh, more conveniently, in my opinion, you will you can take the tree on the second floor of the um, farming guild uh, building. So I teleported to the manor farm using the RD uh, cloak teleport, which I have unlocked. If you don't have that, just teleport to the RD lodestone, and you can head up these stairs inside the house and teleport using the mystical tree here. And that'll take you to the ranch at a time. If you haven't been here before, it'll actually take you to the south side over there by the beach. But you can just run up, and here is Hannibus. Do you want to speak to Hannibus? And he will tell you a bunch of stuff, just talking to Granny and all that. <laughs> and then you're going to want to tell you back to the Anacronia Lodestone. So once you have finished the conversation, you don't actually have to go through any of those options. You're going to want to head back to the Anacronia Lodestone, and you need to go to the ruins, which are in the northeasternmost part of Anacronia. If you've done the uh, the ancient Zygomites at all, you'll likely have visited there, but um, it is a bit of a trek from the base camp for sure. So starting at the base camp, you're going to want to go all the way up here to these ruins. And you can either take the agility course over to Herbie Werby and then come down south out of there and up and around, or if you would prefer, you can just walk from the base camp, especially if you don't have the agility level, you can just go down and all the way through this area and then up and around. It won't be much different, to be honest, because a lot of the agility course along this area and also, you know, near to the Herbie Werby is a little bit unnecessary. Like you can, you can actually walk and it would be faster, especially in this area here. Um, and then you actually have to backtrack a bit from Herbie Werby. So you can either walk or take the agility course. Either way, just get to those northeasternmost ruins, and I will see you there. Okay, so we have arrived now, and my run energy is actually out. Maybe you want to take a dip in the Ooglog pool or bring some Globetrotter boots along with you for this quest. You d I mean, Anachronia is pretty big. Getting around it is not very quick, but once you're here at these northeastern ruins, you want to head around to the south side where Hannibus will be, and let me turn my run back on, and you can speak to him again here. And then you want to use your Dragonkin device that you have on the door here, and that will let you inside of the ruins. Once you're inside here, you want to talk to Hannibus once again. And then you will want to enter the dream when he offers it to you. I think you can, uh, yeah, enter the shared dream when he offers that. And once you're in the dream, talk to him again and start the memory. So these uh, caretakers will show up and they'll start, you know, talking and, and doing some stuff. One of them will leave. And... Um, you here will want to wait for this guy. Basically, he'll walk around the room. And then you want to wait for him to go over to this uh, this pylon thing over here. And then he will enter the, the combination, basically the, the, the password, whatever it is. And uh, you'll be able to use that in the real world outside of this dream to uh, solve the puzzle type thing. This is like a little puzzle kind of in preparation for the big-ish puzzle later on, which isn't, it's not a really difficult puzzle, to be honest. I, I solved it in like five minutes. Um, I mean, I had heard people talking about the puzzle in the quest um, prior to me getting there, and it made it sound like it was about to be like Elemental Workshop 3 level difficulty, but it's definitely not the case. Um, also, it looks like these are the tools that they teased in the pre in the teaser images, which aren't actually ever, you know, used or, or you're never able to actually make use of them. Um, but yeah, once it says that, you see the symbols the dragon can enter into the pylon interface. You want to go ahead, I'll just take a, I'm going to just take a Gaiazo picture of these, but if you think you can remember the symbols, just remember them uh, or take a picture and then you want to talk to Hannibus again to leave the dream. So say no, you don't want to start the memory, and yes, you want to exit the shared dream. 
and then you want to come over here and cycle these symbols to be the ones that you took a picture of in the dream. And you do have to click each of them individually to change them. So I don't know if the symbols are always going to be the same for everyone, but um, yeah, this is what mine are. That one, yeah. Oh yeah, and your character will actually say each time you get the symbol right. So that'll help you out if you aren't sure. If you're trying to just remember them and didn't take a picture, this one's supposed to be the weird A, and this one's the the backwards E, or is that a regular E? It's kind of a regular E. Um, so yeah, there you have that. And then you want to go back into the dream by talking to Hannibus once again. And so yeah, do that. And then speak to him again to start the memory again. And this time you want to follow the other guy when he goes outside, pretty much. So yeah, Vashara will leave. And you just want to follow him outside. He'll head around to the other side of the ruins and we'll be entering another door there and we want to remember the passphrase. Basically, we're going to steal the password from him as he goes through the door. Not entirely sure how these memories are working exactly. I guess Hannibus has some sort of connection to these people given they're um, you know, of the same type as he is, I guess. I mean, I'm sure if I read the words it would have told me the details, but um, yeah, just follow this guy down the down and around the ruins. And again, I'm not 100% sure if this password will be the same for everybody or not. I'll see if it's the same as the one I had on my main account, but um, if not, then you'll just have to, you don't actually have to remember it, it will go in your chat. As you can see, it went in my chat there. And that is the same password I had on my main. So it might be the same for everybody. If not, I mean, it is just in your chat box. So shouldn't have any issue remembering it or, you know, just being able to enter it. So you want to head back now to the south side, re-enter the ruins, and speak to Hannibus once again to exit the dream. Speak to him and exit the shared dream. And then head back outside again in the real world this time and enter that door using the password you have just uncovered. Pretty simple stuff here to get started. Mostly setting up the lore around the quest and everything. There is one part in this quest that I really did enjoy and um, looking forward to doing that again to be honest. But uh, yeah, just click enter on the door and it will ask you the passphrase. This one was Hepin Karan. I have no idea how you want to say that. But you'll then enter this area here. And you can speak with Hannibus to enter yet another shared dream. However, this time you're actually, you know, in a completely different place, which I thought was kind of weird. But you want to head up to the top of this little hill and speak to him once again to start the memory from within here. And then there will be a bit of a chat and then a cutscene as well, which you can skip if you want. Which I'll be doing for the sake of this guide, but if you want to watch it, feel free. Bunch of chatting, bunch of dragonkins showed up around here, including Carapact. Carapac, the uh, antagonist, I suppose, in all of this. And they all disappear, except for a couple of these guys who say some non-words. And um, yeah, just a bunch of talking. And I mean, I, my headphones are, are currently off, so it doesn't really matter if I have audio on or not. But you want to skip the cutscene there, unless you, of course, actually want to watch it. And you'll be back at where you were at the ruins with Karos and Thok there as well, who will talk to you. And then we'll be heading outside of the ruins when Karapak will show up. Who will talk? You'll all talk some crap at each other. And now you want to attack Karapak, who has 5 million health. And uh, it doesn't really matter what you do here because you can't actually deal any damage to him. So, But he won't attack you either. So, yeah, you can just stand here. I don't think it really matters. You can use abilities. You can do whatever you want. 
Nothing will happen. He'll just shrug it off. Well, he won't even shrug it off. He doesn't even make any any movement at all. He just doesn't give a crap. You are nothing to him, given his power with the possession of the needle, Elder Artifact. So, yeah, eventually he will uh, leave. He says something like he could destroy us now if he wanted, but can't be asked or something like that. <laughs> Abandon hope, he's already won, you know, the whole nine, the typical villain thing. And he could destroy us now, but nah. And then he's going to leave. He's going to fly off. And we'll be left to ponder what we can possibly do against invincible enemies. Uh, don't think it matters there, what you say. I just stay silent to avoid more talking. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, once this discussion is finished, you'll give everyone tasks to do and say that you yourself will go speak to Saren. So you want to head back to Berthorpe here and go talk to Saren up above once again, who, uh, yeah, who will tell you to go and speak to uh, Primrose, who you probably don't remember if you've done the quest, but it is the girl from the Needle Skips. Who, yeah, I, I, that quest I never really enjoyed because of how you just have to type so much, and I, I don't know. I've never been. I was never a big fan of that quest, but um, yeah, speak to Saren. She will say, "Go talk to Primrose. She might know more about what we can do against Carapac because of her experience with the needle, personally." If you don't remember, the quest took place up near the Piscatoris fishing colony so you want to go ahead and teleport to the eagle's peak lodestone or you can use your uh, st memory strands to teleport to the memorial of guthics i mean either of those is probably similar in terms of how long it will take uh, to get here but you want to head over to the west of piscatoris memory of guthics is over there so you would just head up north from there past the Eretz, and how about that we got a penguin go ahead and spy on that give me some Nice penguin points for some free Herblur XP at some point whenever I do spend them. Uh, this area is... I was so surprised how big this area was when they added this quest. Like, it's just a massive addition of land to the northeast of... Uh, or northwest here. And there's just only this one house and the one, the one quest that takes place here. I guess um, part of Desperate Times was also in this area, but still... Seems like a very large space for not a whole lot of stuff. But uh, anyways, once you've arrived at the house, go on inside and speak to Primrose. And you want to go through all the, the dialogue options with her. So ask about desperate measures and then, yeah, pretty much go through all of the dialogue options. Ask about her. Ask about the needle. Can it be destroyed? Can it be counteracted? Does it have any weaknesses? And then ask about Gale. Was she vulnerable to anything? Uh, what was it like being her? And then I think that will be it. Yes, once you've done all those chat options, you can actually now head straight back to Saren in Berthorpe. So a little detour there to the Piscatoris area for talking to Primrose. But now we're heading back to Saren, and then we're going to head over to the heart of Gilinor, actually, which is, of course, in the desert. So speak to Saren. She'll say some stuff, and she'll say, meet me outside the heart of Gilinor. So... Gonna head to the PVM hub here and uh, actually go ahead and take out my desert amulet to get me there. You can get here in any number of ways. Use a desert amulet, take you to Narda, go to Alcarid, Lodestone, go south to the desert, take the carpet to Narda, um, go to the heart directly using a heart teleport tablet, use a Telos portal to go there and then come outside. Millions of ways you could get here. Just pick your favorite and then speak to Saren, who is standing outside. And you're going to basically go and speak to the Elder God, 
Jass or Joss, Yas. I don't know how you say it. I don't care how you say it, really. It's Jass, in my opinion. That's how I've always said it. So yeah, here you are. You want to speak to Jass and basically you need to go through chat options to talk about the situation without angering Jass. So this is what I did to do it uh, properly. You want to ask about the situation. You can tell Jass about the situation. However, Jass already knows about it. <laughs> Just says yes. Um, ask if they can intervene. Uh, and then this is probably where it would make make them angry. I would say I say why not? I assume if you say one of these two, they will get angry. Uh, but you want to avoid that. And then point out power rather than talking about weakness, because definitely don't want to call them weak. And then you can ask about the barrier as well to understand more about what is preventing them from helping and how they could do it if they actually wanted, but they would destroy the island and the people there. So we definitely don't want that. Now you want to ask about something else. You can ask about the needle. What's it for? Can it be stopped? Talking, talking. Jess is kind of interesting how 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 they talk. Um, then you can ask if you can assume control. You cannot. And at this point, the can you help option will appear, which is the thing that you want. So do do those options I did, and then speak to and then ask if they can help. And they'll give you this little thing in here, the uh, the eye of jazz, and you're gonna need that to stop Carapac. You can now leave safely with uh, without having gotten destroyed, which is good. And then you want to now return to Karos on Anachronia, who will actually be right next to the Lodestone, so that will be helpful. You don't have to go up to the north this time. Heading there now. Uh, you actually want to make sure, by the way, you want to dequip your weapon. Make sure you have both hands free for this next bit. Um, you don't have to do it before you talk to Karos, but before you speak to Thok here, which you will be talking to next after this conversation. And this next bit is probably my favorite part of the quest, I would say. It's a pretty enjoyable little mini game type thing. Uh, Karapak will show up once again, and yeah, he'll just talk to you. He'll say you guys are worthless or whatever. I don't really know. And uh, now you will need to defend. It's basically kind of, it's kind of like a tower defense type thing a little bit. Um, you're pretty much got to defend the lodestone, which will have some people standing on it from waves of dinosaurs that are going to come. And Thok gives you his stick to use. And basically you have control over Thok, Karos, Hannibus, and Laniakea, as well as yourself. And they all have different abilities that you need to use together to stop the dinosaurs from reaching the, um, the, the, the base here. So let me see. Okay, you have to go through a bit of a tutorial. So to start with, with Karos, you need to change his target settings. Karos' ability is he uses magic, so he can cast from a distance. And also, if there are dinosaurs that are close together, his magic will chain between them. So I go ahead and I'm just going to select closest. Hannibus has a useful um, ability that will basically make him freeze any a dinosaur in place. That, and he'll only focus on that dinosaur until it dies, but he actually doesn't deal damage to it. So he's very useful for stopping the bigger ones that are in the way. You do want to go ahead and move him to complete the tutorial bit. So you can move him wherever you want. You basically left click and then left click where he wants to go. Lani Ikea can throw ranged poison bombs, which aren't very strong, but if they are in melee range, she'll use her spear. And Thok will headbutt them. He basically just melees them, and he uh, he does hit pretty high with that. Uh, and then at the end of the little tutorial bit, Karos will show you basically where the dinosaurs are going to come from. So it's kind of like a tower defense. If you've ever played one, you'll kind of recognize something like this. So they'll come out of this entrance to the base camp, and then they'll go all the way down and around and up into here. Some will come straight across the main bridge, and some will come from this area up here. So those are the places they're going to come from. 
and you basically need to defend against five waves of them. I left them all on their default settings when I did it on my main, so I'm just going to leave that as the case here. I'm um, going to go ahead and move Thok and Karos over here to start, and I had Lenny Akia over there. This is definitely by no means the best way to do it, but I mean, it ended up working for me. And then I usually have Hannibus stick near ish to the lodestone in case something gets through and he can freeze it in place. So once you're ready, you can go ahead and start and things will get going. You yourself can also do damage and you'll do it automatically. You just need to stand near the dinosaur that you want to deal damage to, but you can't actually target it. So if there's multiple in one area, they will, you know, you won't really have a choice of which one you hit, but they'll start by coming from the front here and you can stand close to get a swing on them. And each person's ability will have a bar that'll charge up. And once their bar is full, they can do another attack. So that's basically how everything works. So at the start, you can just stand here and you'll whack uh, the feral dinosaurs as they come and uh, pretty much should have no problem with this bit. It's mostly just the tutorial part still, making sure you actually know how things work. Karos will help you out because he does have the range ability. And it will be it is a bit of a pause in between uh, the waves as well, so you have some time. So now we're on wave two out of five, and as you can see, some are going to be coming from up here. Some feral dinosaurs as well coming from this side, and then there's couple of new kinds. Oh, I guess the ones at the beginning of the quest were feral dinosaurs, not venomous. My bad on that. But there's also going to be uh, some coming from the bridge as well. So you yourself can come over here and help Lenny Akia out with these ones. Thok and Karos will have no trouble taking out uh, the feral that comes that way. And then you can come over here and help them with the brutish ones if they do need it. However, Hannibus would have stopped them if, uh, if they got through. Hannibus does have a pretty long cooldown on his ability, so that's something you definitely want to keep in mind as it could be an issue if he uses it and then you immediately kill the dinosaur. Uh, we're now on wave 3 out of 5 and there's one coming from down here, a feral dinosaur. I mean, you can come down here and kill it yourself because it has such a long way to travel. Um, and then there's some more that are also coming from over there, Venomous as well, but there are some coming from the main spot and one from over there. So they're coming from all directions at this point. Um, I'm gonna go over here and help out Lenny Akia. Again, I don't, this isn't really an exact science. I haven't figured this out perfectly, but you know, you just wanna kinda do anything you can to get them, to stop them from coming through all the way to the middle. And uh, for the most part, Karos and Thok can handle things in the front at the, in the first three waves. And you could wanna help Lenny Akia over here with these ones. And there you have it. Those ones are now cleared out and some more are coming from down here. So you can move uh, some people to help you out with these. I'm going to move Karos over here to assist with these ones. As there are three of them coming in this way, but there are some also coming from up to or down south now and some from the bridge. So we are going to need to be a little bit careful here. Oops, I did not move to click on her. But uh, yeah, Karos should be able to take that guy out and Thok and Karos will handle the others over there. Yep, and then that one should be fine. And we got a bunch more coming from this side as well. And now the Bagrata Rex is coming as well. So this is where it can get a bit dangerous. Uh, I'm gonna move Lenny Akia over here to help us out. They are going to get through. I, I don't really know how you could prevent them from getting through. Obviously, it'll be good to have Hannibus um, on the Bagrata Rex. The Bagrata Rex has a ton of health, and it is going to be a bit of a pain to take out because of how much health it has. I'm not sure why Alinea Kia didn't come over here, but you want to pretty much try and get everyone focusing on it. My character doesn't seem to want to swing. But um, yeah, we took it out. We did lose some health on the main camp and there is another Bagrata Rex coming. However, we did get Hannibus to target that, which is ideal. Have everybody in the area around here for the most part at the start. And now I'm gonna send uh, Lenny Akia and Karos over there to deal with uh, the feral dinosaurs that are coming in. And my character, again, doesn't seem to want to swing at anything, I guess but um, we should have it done with here. As long as you take out the Bagrata Rex, there's pretty much 
no problem. I mean, I am my base camp people are getting kind of wrecked, but we should be good with that last. Okay, <laughs> it got a lot closer there than it did on my main account, but yeah, it is a bit chaotic. I'm sure there's like a perfect strategy you could do, but for the most part, try and focus on killing the Bagrata Rex as they can deal a lot of damage to your main people and they have a lot of health as well. And uh, you shouldn't have any issues. If you do fail, you have to restart the entire thing, which kind of sucks. So yeah, be, be careful. But I did really enjoy that bit of the quest personally. Um, it is quite fun. Um, but yeah, other than that, you will now need to speak to Karos once you're done and go back to where you first spoke to him at the, at the northern exit of the base camp. Little bit of a uh, of a more chaotic result than I was hoping. I thought I would have it a little bit more down, but it is a bit. I don't know. It seems a little bit random too. Sometimes my character just won't swing the the thok item and wouldn't do my attacks, which kind of messed it up. But um, yeah, once you are here, speak to Karos once again, and now you're going to need to go around a couple different places. Oops, I mean I didn't mean to say that, but whatever. You can say either thing there. Um, you can really make whatever choices for a lot of the dialogue in this quest based on your own opinion and how you want your character to appear to others, I guess. But, um, yeah, you're now going to need to go around and find Karos in four different locations. The first one being right here. Speak to him and then place the measure. Once you've placed the measure, he'll say some stuff. And then the screen will fade out and he'll be gone. So that's the first place you find him. Um, I guess you don't need to take it, but you can if you want. You're then going to want to teleport back to the Anachronia Lodestone, and um, Karos will be over by the mining site, which is out to the west and then north of the Lodestone here. So head out west. Once you're back at the Lodestone, you can do some surging and, and whatever. How, how is that not a three-tile wide staircase? Please explain that to me. I really don't understand. But you want to head down out the pathway and then up across the arcane apoterosaur hunting grounds. And there will be a mining site visible just to the north of here. And that is where Karos will be for the next two placements of the measure. Number two and three out of the total of four of them. And you will want to go ahead and find him over here. He'll be off to the west of the mining area on this little patch of, I guess, patch of ruins or whatever you want to call them. Um, oh, he's also there. Okay, I guess we can do there first. Uh, when I did it on my main, I went over there first and then came over here. But either way, uh, it doesn't actually matter. Um, no, I don't want him to repeat. Just place the measure once you're nearby to him. What? Didn't really want him to repeat it. Last time this didn't happen, I just placed the measure and he spoke to me. Oh, okay. I guess I didn't finish the chat dialogue there and he um, and he had to say that to me before it would work. So uh, if it doesn't work when you just place the measure, talk to him and go through the, the chat to fix that. But once you've done that spot, you can then come over here to this spot and uh, and do that. So yeah, I did them in a different order on my main, but I guess it doesn't make any difference. Um, I guess I'll have him repeat it again because I want to make sure it actually works. For some reason it didn't. It did not do this uh, when I did the quest previously, but maybe I'm messing something up here. I don't know why this is not working in such a strange way, I'll be honest with you here. Uh, all I did last time was walk over nearby him and place the measure and uh, that was that. I don't know what the problem is, I actually don't. Maybe place it right on top of his head. Ah, of course, that worked. So yes, I really don't know what was happening there. If you have any issues with him not responding when you place the measure, Go ahead and try to move around, ask him to repeat things, see if that fixes anything. 
But uh, once you have spoken to him there, you want to head back now to the, um, to the lodestone and head north out the exit once again. And you want to head over to where the camouflage Jadinkos are located, which are just a little bit north and east of the spot you spoke to him to begin with. So just head on out past the Jadinkos here and where Thok and Hannibus are chilling out. <coughs> through the, uh, I think this is the Mallee Tops area. You can also take the agility course and go through the cave entrance there. I just figured I would take the uh, the way around in case people, well I guess you do have to have 50 agility for the quest. I'm not sure if that is enough to even do that bit of the course, but better safe than sorry. Head over here and you will be able to find Keros just outside of this area right there near to the camouflaged Chidinkos. So speak to him or maybe don't speak to him. I don't know. Go over by where he's at and place the measure. See if that works if I don't talk to him at all. Uh, yep, that time it worked. First try, so that's good. Place that measure, he will say some stuff once again, and now you want to head back once again to the lodestone. Gotta love running around and talking to people. It's a great time. And then you want to head back to the start place where you, or not the start, but where you spoke to him to begin with. Okay, once you have returned to this location, speak to Karos once again. And you will now be able to enter the laboratory, which the entrance is right here. So once he has finished speaking to you, good news, bad news, the whole nine, you'll be able to enter. And this is where the puzzle of the quest comes in. And I am going to explain how the puzzle is solved, despite the fact that I could just give you the answer straight up. I would like to explain it. It won't, it's not that complicated, it won't take too long, but um, you'll get a little cutscene when you enter, and you'll be in Carapax Lab. Quite an extensive environment just for this quest, I would say. You want to head to the southwestern uh, room and take the tablet from the lectern here. And you'll have Carapax tablet, which you can read. And this basically is how you solve the puzzle. In each room, there are Dragonkin signs on the wall, which is basically the name of the room. And you can figure this out by interacting or inspecting the sign. And it'll say, maybe the tablet can help. Basically, if you read the tablet, it'll talk about each room and describe it and tell you how it is, you know, how it looks, what's in there. And you can use that to figure out which room is which name. This room is the, um, let me pull, go to the page for it. Ba -ba. The southwestern room here is Calistrac, and the reason you can figure that out is because uh, he says, the Calistrac has become my home as I sit and write the journal. The journal's in here, the Calistrac is this location. And you can use the name of the room to kind of translate the, the letters, I guess, of Dragonkin language and use those to enter the codes on the pylons in each room uh, for the to solve the puzzle. And what how you know what to put on the pylon is this bit right here. It says Jass within Slancrast, Fool within Chenkra Chenrath, Wen within Buja, Buja Hepin, and Bick within the Kalistrak. So yeah, that is how you know that. And you can basically use the letters from the different signs to know the symbols to enter on the pylons. So yeah, that's pretty much how you solve the puzzle. Didn't take me too long to solve it when I was doing the quest, so it is pretty easy. I'm sure you can figure it out for yourself, but um, I'm just gonna enter the codes now into these where, like I said, you can get these from the, um, from the various uh, signs that are around the rooms if you are translating them. But this one is the backwards S, the A looking thing, and then the the two with the little triangle. And it'll tell you when you've got the full combination right. So that is how you spell Bic in this weird Dragonkin language. This room up here is Buja Hepin. You can tell that because it talks about the piping 
in the book and the piping is in this room and you need to enter when into this uh, which is going to be the thing that kind of looks like an arrow pointing down and then the A is going to stay in the middle and then this one I don't really even know how to describe what it looks like but that thing that's how you spell when in the dragonkin language and then you want to head to the other two rooms one in the south or yeah one in the south east and one in the northwest um, there's also a name for the room that you're trying to get into which is the name of that is located right there you need that for quite a few of the letters that you need so if you are missing some letters maybe they're located in that word this room here is Chenrath. You can tell that by the, the gurney and the thing that lowers into the lava. That's what he talks about in that section of the book. This one is going to be the E, and then the A stays in the middle again, and then this one is going to be the 2 with the triangle once again. And there you go. The symbols snap into place, and then you want to go, and that is how you spell uh, fool or F-U-L, in the dragon kid language and lastly you want to head to the northeast spot and you're going to need to spell out jazz here and uh, this one's going to be the two with the triangle again and the a thing and then a weird symbol that i don't know how to describe i'm pretty sure from what i've seen the vowels all are represented by this a with the little tail so that's kind of weird but once you've finished that the pylons will snap into place and the door will open. And this is where you're gonna have to do your fight with the boss of the quest. And it is basically a weaker version of the Blackstone Dragon from Elite Dungeon 2, if you've done that. And it is very easy in my experience with, you know, max combat. They only recommend it, of course, 75 combat. So you shouldn't have too much trouble with this thing. He does do the Gemstone Dragon special attack that he has in that fight, and he also does the Ring of Fire. However, I did test it with my main. The Ring of Fire does not deal anywhere near as much damage, anywhere near as quickly as he does in the regular fight. It only hits about 1,000s. Uh, however, it is at the same rate, so it is a bit of damage, but you can definitely stand in it for a decent amount of time and not have to worry. So. Definitely not anything compared to the actual Blackstone Dragon. You shouldn't have to worry too much. But uh, the most annoying thing is when he's doing his Ring of Fire spec, he will be pretty much immune to damage. You'll deal much less damage against him during this. And he will teleport to the middle of the room every time he does this, so you don't have to worry about it being in a different location. And just like in ED2, you want to just avoid it by standing in you know the correct places. But like I said, it does not hit very high at all. So you, or I mean, it hits thousands, which is, I guess, high, but you don't have to worry about it as much as in ED2, because that, that in ED2, it'll pretty much kill you immediately. Uh, and on my main, he did this two times, which I'm pretty sure were at specific HP thresholds, as far as I remember. Um, yeah, or it seems like it, at least. I, I and, and then, like, after this point, he didn't do it again, so I assume it's at a certain HP level. But he's doing the same thing. Again, teleports to the middle of the room. Really, really easy boss fight. Strange how they just... I mean, I guess it makes sense to use the same dragon because it's from their laboratory. Um, but I don't know. It's uh, it's not that interesting of a boss for sure. Especially given, it, as far as I can tell, it has no new specials. But we went ahead and zerked there as, as the spec was ending to try and get this done a bit quicker. Didn't bring my Ring of Vigor, unfortunately, but not a big deal. But as you can see, we've done quite a bit more damage to it, and it hasn't done the spec again. Right around now is when it did the Gemstone Dragon special attack on my main account. But maybe we'll actually not even get that. <clears throat> yeah, we're not even going to end up getting that. Basically, if he spits out a thing towards you and the screen starts to shake, you want to make sure you move off of the spot you were standing, and you'll avoid it. Um, I'm assuming it doesn't hit as high as the Blackstone Dragon in ED2, but I did not test that one. Once you've killed it, Care Pack will show up here. 
and you will you can choose whatever option you want there you will then uh, use the thing that Joss gave you to stop him for the most part you chain him up and then the little Joss little peeper things appear and uh, kind of make him serve them I guess or serve yeah I don't really know those things are kind of funny though the little whack-a-moles that show up you got what you deserved <laughs> again choose whichever option you like does not matter and now you need to escape because the lab is going to start collapsing so yeah you got a timer on your screen you got to run out doesn't matter which way you go up the stairs first the rocks will stop you so go up the stairs and then go back down and go up a different set of stairs and I'm going to head this way to start. But either way, you will get some rocks behind you and then some rocks in front of you. And then if you try to go down this hallway, you'll get some more rocks in front of you again. So you want to head back. And you will get freed out of here by Keros, who will smash the rocks for you. So he'll talk to you for like 20 minutes and it'll take you forever to be able to move. But then you want to head back across and Thok has cleared the way over here for you. And you can go through. And then some rocks will fall in front of you here between you and Hannibus. You want to head through this hallway. You want to keep spam clicking because sometimes rocks will fall and I think that messes up with your pathing. So keep spam clicking to get through here as quickly as possible as you can see right there and right there I stopped walking because of the rocks but you can definitely get out of here with plenty plenty of time and I have 40 seconds left and just exit the lab exit and you'll be in the clear there will be a cutscene that you can watch if you like or skip it if you'd rather and once the cutscene is completed you want to head back to Barbarian or not the Barbarian Outpost head back to Burthorpe and talk to Saren and you will have completed the quest. So this is gonna be the end of the Desperate Measures quest guide. I hope this helped you guys out if you were struggling with the quest at all, with the puzzles or anything like that. Um, overall, I mean, it was not a bad quest for sure. It was a good quest, but the disappointment really comes in the fact that there is not really anything post-quest to do. These options, by the way, do not matter once again. Say whatever you like. But um, yeah, there's not really anything to do after the quest aside from, uh, and there we have the quest completion screen, three quest points, 20K archeology span and combat XP lamps, the cosmic focus, a cosmetic override and the Remo totem piece. So you can use these lamps on whatever you want. And then you'll have the cosmic focus, which you can use to create a relic that prevents sprite focus from dropping below 10% when excavating. Um, I mean, it, it, that's not that huge of a deal. It's just a small buff to archaeology if you're lazy and don't want to follow the time sprite. Um, so you, you do have to get some other pieces to create this, though. However, I'll make a separate video talking about the cosmic focus. And then I'll also make a video on the Remo totem. But you get a Remo totem base here, which is a new totem that lets you charge your totems from the base camp, which is a very nice thing to have, especially for things like the totem of the abyss. Uh, so I'll definitely be creating that and uh, showing that in a video as well. But that's pretty much all you have to do after the quest is go get the relic and go finish the totem. And that's it. There's no like Slayer monster. There's no repeatable content post quest. And I guess that just kind of feels kind of uh, kind of lame after it being, you know, four months since archaeology came out for this one update. So, yeah, that's just kind of my opinion. Um, you know, you do this quest, takes you maybe an hour, and then you're done. Uh, and we don't have any idea of when the next piece of content is coming out. So hopefully we'll get some news pretty soon. But either way, I hope this helped you guys out. Hope you enjoyed it. Look out for my videos on the quest rewards coming out very soon. And I'll see you then. Peace out.